QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Set up inventory items. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We set up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time we open the file, maximizing the home page to the gray area, noting that in the view dropdown, we got the hide icon bar and open windows lists open, open windows open on the left hand side. We're gonna be adding inventory items at this point, remembering that we talked about in detail in a prior presentation, the fact that the items will differ greatly and have more or less complexity depending on the type of industry we are in. Just so a quick recap, if we don't have inventory, then we're just gonna have service items where we'll need them for the invoice and the sales receipts. If we have inventory, we might use a periodic inventory system, in which case we're not gonna track them every time we make a sale, but make periodic adjustments, tying possibly to a worksheet outside of the system, or we might use a perpetual inventory system, in which case we're gonna be tracking the inventory both when we purchase it, with say a bill up top on the purchasing side of things, not just recording the dollar amount we paid for it, but also tracking the items of inventory that we need listed as assets. And then when we make the sales using an invoice and a sales receipt, those are also gonna drive down the inventory as we enter that data. So it, to add the items, we're gonna go to the lists drop down. We're gonna go to the items lists. The last time we set up the service items, which are kind of like an intro into the inventory items, the inventory items having a bit more complexity, as we can see, if we hit the item drop down, rise up, because it's going upward, we go to the new up top, we see we got the service item, which is a lot more simplified because you don't have to deal with the cost of inventory versus the inventory part, which has a bit more complexity to it. So let's just tab through this and we could enter these inventory items one at a time this way, or we could try to bulk upload them, which if you're setting up a new company file is typically what you would want to do. You'd want to set up all your items at one time so that uh, the entering of the invoices and the bills would be as easy as possible. So an inventory item, we got the item name, we've got a sub item if applicable, the manufacturer's part number if applicable, the description, for the purchase, which is gonna be showing on say the bill and the purchase orders, the descript and then the cost, that's how much we buy the stuff for the inventory. The cost of goods sold is the expense account that will be hit when we sell the inventory using an invoice or a sales receipt. The preferred vendor is the person that we typically buy the inventory from. That's not a required field. The sales transaction description will be the on the description when we create an invoice and a sales receipt and then the sales price is how much we sell it for which will be higher than the cost typically of course sales tax will mean it's subject to sales tax or not or the tax means sales tax so typically inventory will be subject to sales tax if it's going to the end user possibly not if it's going from like a business to business and then the income account that we're going to hit when we sell the inventory using an invoice or sales receipt, something like sales revenue income. The asset account down here represents the balance sheet account that's gonna be going up when we buy the inventory with a bill or check and going down when we sell the inventory with a sales receipt or an invoice. The reorder point is telling us when we get down to a certain number of inventory units that it's gonna remind us we need to order more. The amount on hand represents the amount of inventory we currently have on stock. The total value, how much the value of the inventory is, and the as of date, uh, meaning the point in time that we put that in place. So I'm gonna close this back out. 
Note that, and I'm not going to save it here, we can also add the inventory as we will do this time by having an add multiple items. That's what we'll, we, we will do here. That's what you would typically do when you first set up the inventory. Notice also you could add the inventory parts when you actually create bills and invoices. So if I was to go over here and enter a bill, for example, and I'm going to say, okay, let's do a bill. I can add the inventory item as I enter the bill. So I can say I'm going to add an inventory inventory part right here and do it as you know, kind of on the fly. But we want to make typically the data input forms as easy as possible, especially on the sales side, because we might have, say, a clerk or something, someone else helping us to enter that data. And of course, we want them to be able to open a sales receipt. Let's say if someone came to them with a guitar, say, here's the guitar I want to buy. We want them to be able to just pick that thing and allow allow the system to record everything that needs to be recorded, which is a fairly complex transaction when you're talking about uh, an, in, an invoice of inventory or a sales receipt with inventory, because it has to track the inventory, which means there's a lot more stuff going on behind the scenes, even though the data input hopefully will be quite simple to perform. Okay, so then I'm gonna close this back out and say no here. Now the inventory, when we first set up the company, we, if we're first starting the company from scratch, we would just basically want to know what our items are and be able to set up our items and think about the cost of the items and the sales price and so on. Uh, if we're changing from one company file to another, meaning I was using an accounting system outside of this company and then moving that accounting system into QuickBooks, if we have inventory items set up in another system somewhere, maybe the best thing would be to like export that to say Excel. And we'll try to provide you with this Excel worksheet so that you can have it. And then if once we have it in Excel, that could help us to kind of copy and paste it into our QuickBooks system as easy as possible. Also note, when we're talking about inventory, if we already have inventory on hand and we're starting the new company system and we're trying to say, this is us going forward from this point in time going forward, then we're going to have a balance sheet account for inventory. So the inventory that I put on hand, I can't just debit inventory to have the balance sheet account be correct just on the number side. I have to enter the inventory parts that tie out to a cost of, in this case, 2,896 so that I can do the perpetual inventory tracking system. So as I add the inventory for the first time here in my new accounting system, I need to do it in such a way that the inventory costs tie out to that 2,896, which will then tie out to this number. And then the other side of it, when we, when we record this transaction, will go to like equity in some way, shape or form. So we'll see how that kind of uh, pans out as well. All right, so here we go. Here's a list of our inventory items. Similar strategy as with the service items. We want to basically have our headers up top, trying to tie out to the headers that are going to be in QuickBooks. And then we've got our data uh, down below. So we're going to say the item name is going to be an abbreviation. In this case, ELPs. We sell guitars. These are just made up guitars. We just looked up some guitars and gave a price to them. These are not actual prices. We've got the Epiphone Les Paul, the sales description that's going to show up when we put it on when we make a sale, an invoice or a sales receipt, purchase description, which is gonna show up when we enter the bill, the item in a bill, the cost is what we're gonna purchase it for, shows up on the bill. It's also gonna decrease the inventory account when we create an invoice or sales receipt by that amount. The sales price is higher, that's what we sell it for, which is gonna show up on the invoice or sales receipt when we sell the item. Cost of goods sold is the expense account that will be hit when we create a sales receipt or a an invoice and it's going to be hit by the cost not the sales price the sales account or income account is the revenue account that's going to be hit when we make a sales receipt or a invoice it'll be hit by the 500 which will be seen on the invoice whereas the cost will not be seen on the, on the invoice because it will be provided to the customer inventory account represents the account that will be increased when we enter a bill or check to purchase inventory and decreased when we enter a sales receipt or invoice this is the quantity that we currently have on hand of each of these units they're all going to be subject to tax when we sell them and as of we're going to put them in place as of the last day of the prior period 12 31 22 
so that everything should wash out to retained earnings and be ready to go as of the first date of the current year we're operating in, in this case, January 1st, 2020. Wait a second. Yeah, we'll do a January 1st, 2022. So we're kind of working in the future a little bit here, but that's how we'll do it. Here we go. Meaning as of the time of the recording, it's 2022, but we're gonna be doing this as if we're starting the new company file in January 2023 going forward. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to QuickBooks and try to set up my data input so I can just copy and paste that over. So I'm gonna to go to the item drop down, rise up, and go to the, I'm gonna say we wanna add multiple items, just like we did before, but this time not service items, we want the inventory. So I'm gonna hit the inventory parts, and active, we want the active items, of course, and then I need to customize the headers to put them in the same order. So I'm gonna customize up top. And so the amounts that have been chosen are on this side, the ones not chosen over here. So we got the item name, that's necessary. S uh, sub item, we don't have any sub items. I'm gonna remove that by going remove. The cost, we're gonna need that. The sales price, need that's gonna be that, the amount we sell for, cost of goods sold account, preferred vendor. I don't think we have a preferred vendor. We could add that, but no, I'm gonna remove that. Income account, asset account, reorder point i didn't add a reorder point so i'm going to remove that the max uh no, i'm going to remove that and then the total value the sales price uh the total value i don't think i added the total value sales tax and then the manufacturer's part number we don't have one of those quantity on hand so let's tie this out so i'm going to say okay so we've got the item name, so item name is first, then we've got the sales description and then the purchase description. So notice here's the purchase description, I need to add that. Let's pull that over here and then the sales description, let's add that over. So I'm gonna move the sales description up by saying up, 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 so that's number two. This is gonna have a vertical order in the same way as the horizontal order is gonna show up this way. It's a little confusing until you kind of get used to it. Up, 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 and then it's totally not that bad. So we got item, item, purchase description will be purchase description, or sales description will be sales, and then purchase description. You see how it's working here. All right, and then we're gonna say then what's next? Cost, sales price. So I'm gonna say, all right, then the cost, sales price, cost to get sold. That looks good. And then we've got the income account and the asset. So then I got the income account, asset account, that looks good. Income account, asset account, quantity on hand, quantity on hand, I'm gonna bring that up. One, move up, move it up, and then quantity on hand, sales tax code, sales tax code, and as of date. I wanna have the as of date. And I think that's all we need. So we don't have the full name, manufacturer, preferred vendor, reorder point, total value. We might need that, but I'm going to keep that here. Average cost. So let's keep that as is. I'm going to say OK. And then hopefully I lined them up so I can just copy and paste now as if QuickBooks was like Excel. I could just copy this stuff. Just go boom, copy, control C, and then just put that right there and control V, control V or, or right click in V or whatever you want, however you want to paste, whatever you want to do. So there we got it. So now we got the item, the sales, the sales description looks good. Purchase description, that's what we bought it for. That's what we sell it for. Cost to get sold account. Sales is the income account. And we do have a sales account because that was set up in our chart of accounts. If you have a sales account that was not set up, just like, just like with the well, we have the issue with the inventory. So they're saying we don't have an inventory account here. So let me check my chart of accounts. Go to the lists drop down chart of accounts. What do you mean I don't have inventory? Because they called it inventory asset instead of in inventory. It's like, okay, whatever. We probably should have looked that up before we copied and pasted it. But I'll just change these and say, okay, fine. Inventory asset. You know what I meant, QuickBooks. So now I gotta go in and change all these and it's gonna warn me every time. I know that's what I'm trying to change, QuickBooks. Don't give me the don't give me the message anymore. I hear you. Don't you see? I'm changing all of them. I'm changing all of them now. So we're gonna change them all to inventory asset. Okay. Okay. 
So there we have that. Quantity on hand, sales tax code, they're all taxable. Notice that generally, if you're selling to the end user, they might be subject to sales tax, right? But you might have certain customers that might not be subject to sales tax. So this is usually the driving component to be subject to sales tax. Remember, the sales tax item we, we talked about in the preferences, you've got to go to the edit dropdown to turn on the sales tax. So in this, we turned on the inventory to do this. So inventory is on. So now we have inventory parts and then we added our sales tax, which will differ in the United States by where you are located. So we're subject to the sales tax and we would then have to think about the customer with regards to sales tax, if there are any customers that would not be subject to sales tax, even though in general, the item would be subject to sales tax. We won't talk about that yet. We might go over that later. And then the as of date is of the end of the last year, because we're going to be entering our data as of January 1st, 2023. Okay, let's save the changes and see if it gives me any problems. Six inventory items have been saved. No problems. Does it look like it's given me? Let's go to my item list, which you could find item drop down item list. So now we've got our service items and our inventory parts. So if I double click or if I right click and I wanted to edit this one, then I can see it in this view. So now at the same field, just in a different view, there's the name. Here's the, the description that's going to show up on when I make a bill or purchase order. Cost, there's the cost of goods sold account, preferred vendor. We didn't put one, but it should be Epiphone, you would think. And then the sales price, tax, code income it goes to the income account and then it's going to be inventory account down here minimum reorder point we've got one on hand so we put that beginning balance the fact that we put one on hand at an average cost of 400 that's going to now make a journal entry into our accounting system so you might say well how is quickbooks going to do that because i didn't i didn't tell it what's the other side of the journal entry meaning now i just told quickbooks that i have inventory hopefully worth 2008 96 which is represented i could do my little calculation here right i could say well what's it going to be it's going to be what i cost of my inventory times how many units i have on hand i can copy that down and say if i sum that up then i've got inventory that should show up on the balance sheet for 20896 and i should have a sub ledger breaking out each unit of inventory that i have by epiphone les paul epiphone standard Pro, Epiphone, Riviera, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's check it out then. So let's let's go to our reports now. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's take a look at the balance sheet standard. And let's customize up top. And let's say that we're going to say this is for, uh, well, I got to make the range ne in the next year. 01, 01, 23 to 12, 31, 23. And then run it. So there we have it. Let's customize it again. Fonts and numbers and up the font size to 12 so you can see it more better. I want you to be able to see it more better. So down here, it put the other side into opening balance equity. What is that? That's not even a thing. Like, and so that's what QuickBooks does, right? It puts it into some equity account. So if I do that every time with every account that we add, the other side's going to be dumped into some equity account possibly opening balance equity, which isn't like a real account. You don't want you don't want to keep it in opening balance equity, in my opinion, because it looks ugly because, you know, you, there, there's no such account. It's like it's a it's a clearing account. But but the fact that it's going to clear out two equity means the total equity will be correct. And then we'll go in there and we'll fix the equity account, which if it's just a sole proprietor account, we'll just have one equity account, which could be called capital, owner's equity, whatever you want to call it. If it's a partnership, then you got to break it out to the partnership accounts, two or more partners, which is in accordance with the partnership agreement and their capital balances. And that gets confusing. If it's a corporation, then it would be broken out into basically retained earnings, which then everybody knows the value because they have equal shares because you broke it out into equal shares. So it's actually a little bit easier. You also might have, you know, the the investment of the capital stock, but there it is. So there is that. So then we should have the now if I double click on this and drill down on it, you could see we could see what it does here. Let's change the date from 010122. 
And so now it entered all these transactions as inventory adjustments. That's weird. Why did it enter them like that? Because that's the form that QuickBooks is going to try to default to whenever there's an adjustment to inventory. Because usually inventory is going to be uh, hit, right? Inventory is going to have an impact on inventory when you enter a bill to purchase inventory or when you make a sale with an invoice or a sales receipt, or you can basically adjust the inventory if you had a periodic adjustment, possibly at the end of the period you made a physical count that differs from, uh, from what's in the system. So QuickBooks is always gonna use a form whenever it can, right? So, so you would think it might've used a bill form here, but it can't really use a bill form because we didn't assign a vendor to it. So it, it used a, a, an adjustment here. As an, if you have an accounting background, you might just say, well, why didn't it just enter a journal entry? Why didn't it just go boom, company, drop down, journal entry? Why doesn't it use that as the form? Remember that the journal entry is the last form that QuickBooks will always use. If there is a form that is designed for the standard process of data input, that's the form that will be used, even if we don't do the data input in that format. We just put a balance into the system and, and it used the best form that it could. And if it couldn't find a form, that's when it would use basically just a, a journal entry. That helps QuickBooks to then be able to adjust the subledger accounts as well, because these forms are designed to link together the journal entry to the subledgers. So if I go, so now if I if I go into this transaction detail, if I go into one of these there's what the form looks like. So it looks totally different than what we did the data input in because we just added the item and told it that it had a beginning balance in it. Okay, so that's weird, but so hopefully that makes some sense. And so then we, we should have an inventory report, reports drop down, inventory reports. So now we got the inventory valuation summary, let's say, let's make it as of 12.31.24. And so there we have, now we've got our quantity on hand. Let's make it a little bit larger and we'll make it 12 on the font. Yes, okay. So now it's tracking on a perpetual inventory system. We got our beginning balances in place, which ties out to the 2,896. That ties out to what our beginning balance was here. So that looks good. That ties out to what's on the balance sheet. That looks good so far. And then we've got each of our units. We've got our ukulele. We've got our Epiphone Les Paul and so on. The unit by unit of the inventory that we need. We have then the the average cost because it's using a flow assumption of uh, a weighted average. You know, you got FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, specific identification. We're using weighted average here. So then the asset value and then the percentage of the total and this is what we're going to sell them for. So this is what's gonna actually show up on the invoice or sales receipts when we sell them. So then if I go to the homepage, just to kind of hopefully drive this home, if I was to go into like a bill and enter an item and say, we got, we got some kind of item here, there it's gonna put the quantity, it's not gonna put the quantity, it's gonna put the name of the item, sales description, the cost, this is what we're gonna purchase them for, and so on, helping us to populate the purchase of them. And then if I was to sell them, this and this, by the way, would increase the accounts payable, it would increase the inventory by 440 if we bought one of them, and it would increase the subledger by the Epiphone Riviera in this case. And so I'm gonna close this out, close this out, no. And then when we make a sale on the invoice side of things, we can choose some inventory part or some, and this then would, and it, if, I, if I have to add a customer, so the sales tax would be turned on here. So let's just say customer one, I'll add a customer. Customer one, tab, quick add. So now the sales tax is calculated because it needs to have a customer to calculate the sales tax. But now this is actually a fairly complex entry that can be done quite easily. If someone came up to the register or someone called in and said, I wanna order, you know, buy, a, buy this or whatever, someone can fill this out quite easily and just say, okay, yeah, one Epiphone Les Paul, they enter it into the system, but the actual journal entry is fairly complex because now you've got an invoice increase in the accounts receivable by the amount that we charged plus the sales tax because we had to calculate the sales tax because we're subject to that. So there's the 525 AR going up by, the other side's going to the revenue account which is determined by the item, which would be the sales account, 
but it's only going to be going up by the 500 because it's subject to the sales tax and that's what we charged. The payable account that's going to go to the sales tax payable is going to go up by 25. Then there's also going to be a decrease to the inventory in terms of the of the ledger inventory account by I think 400, which isn't actually on the invoice, but the system knows about it because the item knows about it and the cost of goods sold expense will go up by that 400 as well. Plus the sub ledger will be impacted on a perpetual inventory system, decreasing the units of the guitars, the sub ledger totals then tying out to what's on the balance sheet. So a lot is going on when you do the simple data input of an invoice, especially if you have inventory related to it. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. I'm not gonna record it. I'm gonna say no. And so that's the general idea. Notice there's no impact on the income statement, reports, drop down, company financial, profit and loss from 0101 uh, 222 to 123122, nothing's happening. Even if something did happen to the income statement, it wouldn't matter because we entered it as of 2022 and the income statement will roll over into the balance sheet. So as I enter these beginning balances, sometimes QuickBooks might enter something into an income statement. Perhaps when I make the accounts receivable, it uses an invoice which goes to sales, enters an income statement amount. I'm not worried about that because I'm entering the data in the prior period, which will then roll into, the income statement will roll into the balance sheet in the equity section, the income statement for this time frame that we wanna work into this QuickBooks system on starting January 1st, 2023 will not be impacted. We'll see that in future presentations, it'll be great.